The aquatic biology program is a really important tool for looking at the health of the river over time. Because our program has been going on for 20 years and we're, we're reevaluating the, the river every year, looking at every site every three years, we're able to really get a good idea of what variables come into play and, and what's influencing the St. Joe River. We hired our first aquatic biologist in 1997. The first summer of monitoring was in 1998. South Bend then joined us in 2001. We had done years worth of microbiological and chemical analysis of the river. And we had years worth of data, but that only goes so far. If we have a chemical spill on the river here today and come out and grab a sample, the results could be completely different if we came out and grabbed the same sample from the same spot tomorrow because rivers flow downstream. However, the communities that live there, the fish and the other organisms that live in the river are there all the time. So the makeup of those different types of animals can tell us a lot more about the health of the river. We look to see the number of fish that we collect, the diversity, which means the different kinds of fish we collect in different spots, and the health of those species. So the method that we use for collecting fish is electrofishing. That's the standard method used by biologists to do stream surveys or river surveys. It's a non-lethal method. The fish are stunned momentarily. We scoop them up and we put them in live wells to recuperate. We have a boat-mounted electrofishing unit that we use for the larger rivers, the Elkhart River and the St. Joseph River. When we're in the smaller streams like Christiana Creek or Jude Creek in South Bend, we use a tote barge unit. And when we're in the really small streams, we have a backpack unit that has a battery on it. After we complete a fish survey, we also do a habitat survey. We're looking at things like uh, if there's a lot of boulders to hold fish or what the stream banks look like. If we have good riparian zones, meaning are the, the edges of the stream impacted by human influence. In a typical fish survey on the St. Joseph River, we could get up to four or five hundred fish. And sometimes we will get well over a thousand if we encounter large schools of minnows. So after we collect the fish, we bring them back to a location and we process them. And what that means is we sort them out, we identify the different species. With the game species, we actually take individual lengths and weights. Some of the game species like bass and walleye will take scales from them so we can age them in the lab. With walleye and bass, we also tag those. It has our phone number on there and an individual number specific to that fish so we can track movements. With the non-game species, we'll just get the maximum and minimum length of those fish and we'll release them back into the river. We do keep some for fish tissue samples and those tissue samples will be sent off to a lab to see how safe they are for human consumption. A lot of people don't realize how diverse the St. Joe River is. In the St. Joseph River watershed, we found about 85 different species of fish. We have big fish like red horse and suckers. We also have some really unusual fish out there like gar that are typically aren't caught by fishermen. They can get really large. And we also have some really large game fish like muskies that are pretty rare in the river, but we'll get those in electrofishing surveys. In the St. Joe River, we also have some state endangered species. Those are species that are, are very sensitive to pollution, and it's a really good sign that we're finding them here. One species in particular is the greater red horse. It's a molluscivorous fish, meaning that it likes to eat mollusks, snails and clams off the bottom of the river. Another really cool, unusual fish that we find in the river is the lamprey. Lampreys attach to fish and will suck their blood. They are bizarre looking animals, but the truth is they're actually supposed to be here. They're a native species. They're actually an indicator of good water quality. Examples of indicators of poor water quality would be white suckers. Uh, we also see a lot of common carp here on the St. Joe River, which are a very tolerant species. In general, when we do a fish survey on the river here, we don't encounter a lot of tolerant species. We find some, so that's a good sign. When we do surveys on the smaller tributaries like Yellow Creek and Bogo Creek, uh, those are two tributaries that, that do have some water quality problems and predominant species in those streams are uh, indicators of poor water quality like the white sucker. Part of the aquatics program is education. Uh, this program reaches almost 5,000 people a year, sometimes more. The more people can be educated about the positive things going on on the river and in the river, the better off everyone will be. In our annual report, we'll highlight how healthy the river is, how things are improving, how things might be getting worse in certain sections of the river. 
We'll also have a, a detailed section on eating fish out of the river, some of our tagging information, and some water quality information in there for people to look at. The efforts of this program have gone so far to be able to open people's eyes to see what beauty there is in those rivers and streams that we have.